This is Theodore Valenzuela with LiesTheDevil.com. It's about exposing lies of the devil. Uh, in this Bible study, we're going to be talking about how the devil treats children. So uh, the last handful of Bible studies, um, they're not like normal Bible studies you would find at a church. Um, they're done in a way to talk to children and to uh, wake them up. And so I pray that you'll get this video, you'll um, learn from it, you'll use it at your church, or you can send the link to the pastors and um, get everybody on one accord, okay? Just like what the Lord wants, one mind working together as the body of Christ. Um, this is about how the devil treats children, okay? And our focus verse um, with the children this week was Hebrews eleven twenty five. Okay, Hebrews eleven twenty five. Choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. It all lasts just for a moment. Um, and then I uh, go through and we do a review on what we've learned for the week. So um, it was all about Halloween, right, for the month of October uh, and the Day of the Dead that's coming up here, that, that, that's here for the, the beginning of November. Um, so we talk about what is Halloween, how Christians to stay away from it, conquering evil spirits with the Holy Spirit, and how the devil tricks children, and the seven signs your church is secretly practicing witchcraft. Um, this is stuff that's it's very important for Christians to stay away from, okay? So... Uh, after I ask, I give a review with the children uh, on what we talked about for the previous weeks. Um, I ask them, like, what do you guys remember? And it's just been an amazing, it's been amazing to hear what the children remember and how they're taking in all of this and how they don't want to do sorcery. They know that Halloween is evil. Um, it went from two families to three, and now we know of five families that did not practice any of this stuff in fact one family um down the street from us uh they've been it's a family tradition they've been doing halloween for the longest time and it was a huge family um get together okay we live in a very hispanic community and and they're, they're really big on tradition uh one of them broke it nobody showed up she she didn't put on the event um last night on halloween and uh, and her whole entire family ended up staying at home in their own homes. Just a, an amazing move from the Lord. So it went from two families to three. Now we know of five families that when we were doing these studies and we're handing out pamphlets, I'm going to put these. I didn't have enough time to put these on the website. Um, and uh, But we were handing these out. Okay. Blanketing the city. And uh, I'm going to start making a bunch of these so that you can put that so that you can order them on liesofthedevil.com so that you can go ahead and start doing this as well. And it's going to be up there for free that people can order. Um, you know, I'm a family man. Uh, I've got work as well. And I'm not making excuses at all. But, uh, you know, a lot if I had help or um, if I was able to hire people, um, if the ministry was were to grow in that way, I could help people could you know can help me and we can accelerate and do things faster but it's all in god's timing okay so please be patient with me and i appreciate that but this was this has been an amazing way to wake up the city um and then uh we talk about leviticus and don't learning don't learn from evil spirits wizards or do magic as it will confuse and hurt you um and then second corinthians 4 4 the devil blinds the minds of people that will not believe Jesus Christ. He is love, life, and light, and he is the image of the invisible God. And we talk about how the merchants of the world, the mighty men and the merchants of the world, they sell sorceries to help to deceive the nation, nations. Um, that's why in stores, they're always trying to get kids interested in death. That's how the devil does it, right? So um, then we move on from the review, and I talk about the different treats the devil likes to give children. And I talk about fake love and happiness. And we talk about what does fake mean? I ask them, what, what does fake mean? And, um, you know, they talk about how it's, fal it's false, it's false happiness, right? Get them involved. Whoever you're doing Bible studies with, even at your home, get them involved. Um, 
Proverbs 11.1, 1, a false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Um, this isn't just about monetary, you know, a, a false balance. This is talking about your life, having a balance in your life. Don't watch too much TV. Don't, don't do too much of anything, really. The only thing that you should be indulging yourself in is, the, is, is God's word. And even then, you know, God wants you not to just be like a scribe and a Pharisee and delving in his word and, and dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's. He wants you to go out and live life and proclaim the gospel. And then I explained to him, I say, you know, have you ever seen those gold coins? They look like they're gold coins, but they're really chocolate. Okay. It's fake, right? It's, they're not, it's not really gold. It's fake. Um, so, uh, Proverbs 12, 22, lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. An easy, simple way for them to understand what fake means. And mind you, I'm talking to kids that are five, six years old, even, you know, even like three-year-olds so that we've had like, you know, three, four-year-olds show up, um, or four-year-olds show up, you know, they're just barely learning. Um, and they're all homeschool, which is the amazing thing is that this, this place is a big public school place. It used to be. And by chiseling out and doing the work for, you know, five years, six years in being where we're living at right now, it's totally transformed people. And it's not because of anything that we're doing. It's because when you love the Lord and you want to do his work, he gives you not only the desires of your heart, but you get to see change just permeate. Uh, I, I can't tell you enough. It doesn't matter how you start. It doesn't matter what you do. Just do it. God will then guide you if you're listening to me out there. Okay. And he'll give you the resources. Okay. He'll give you the resources. So we tell the children, don't lie. Don't, don't lie to your parents. That's what it starts, right? Being a kid, you lie to your parents because you want to get away with things. Don't do that. The only, you know, and we explain to them the only way you shouldn't be listening to your parents is if they ask you to do something ungodly or they're asking you to do something that's wrong, right? That's the only time you do not pay attention. You do not do, you do not, you don't lie, you know, don't, you know, always tell the truth. Um, and they understand that. And it's just, it's again, you know, we're not circumventing the authority of parents. Parents actually appreciate when you talk to the children this way. They appreciate the children. They appreciate you, t you teaching them these things. Um, and then I talk about, so how, how can you know, to st how can you stay away from lying? How can you stay away from people that are going to hurt you? Matthew seven twenty. wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. This is what Jesus Christ is saying to us. And I said, uh, you know, in time you'll get to know people, uh, you know, in church. And in time you'll see who, what they're really about. But um, you know, fruits, fruits can even be deceptive, right? You have to take a bite of the fruit. You've got to, you've got to know who somebody is deep down and that takes time. But I talk about an ornamental tree, you know, like those gold coins are fake an ornamental tree. What's an ornamental tree? There's, there's, there's trees that are planted in apartment buildings and, uh, commercial properties where they they've got orange it's like this a beautiful tree it's got a lot of oranges on it right but it's an ornamental tree and ornamental tree are grown for their aesthetic value and the sheer enjoyment of having them in the garden or having them around properly it's it's fake it's it's horrible fruit it doesn't taste good at all but it's there for aesthetics it's there to look good and i say i explain to them it's the same thing with people that um say that they love the lord they can look like they're providing a lot of good fruit, but if they're not giving you the full gospel, like what we're giving these children right now about staying away from witchcraft and Halloween, it's fake. You know, God's word is amazing and you want the fruit. You want all of it. And it's the best tasting fruit that you're ever going to receive. It's the best tasting anything. It's God's word. Um... First John 4, 1 John 4.1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Okay? And then I follow up, I say, so what does God hate? And I let them all answer individually. 
Now we talk about what is fake love, right? Because that's what the devil does. He gives you fake love and fake happiness. So what is fake love? And then I talk about anybody see those heart-shaped boxes like in Valentine's Day or whatever and they're filled with candy. It looks like, you know, it, it makes you feel like you're loved. It makes you feel like you're happy. But it's it's not it's not it's not real. Okay? And then we talk about 1 Kings 19:2 and how Elijah got rid of the satanic worshipers in Israel and Jezebel wanted to kill him for it. 1 Kings 19:2. Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, "So let the gods do to me her false satanic worshiping gods, idols. Let them do more to me if I do not take your life like you took my false prophet's lives. And then um, it's not, this isn't just about a woman. Proverbs twenty one nineteen. it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with the contentious or angry woman or man. And uh, just like Jezebel there, getting angry and wanting wanting wrath and hatred. You know, it's better just to leave out, go in the wilderness. It's better to be on your own than to be with somebody that's angry. Look at this, you know, this attractive woman. And look how ugly she looks. I think this is probably AI, you know. I'm not even sure, but or Photoshop. But, you know, when my daughter gets angry and she retaliate, you know, uh, does something that I, I tell her, I said, honey, it, that looks ugly. Don't do that. And I say that to even my, my son, you know, you've got to be honest with children. There's no more sugarcoating things. And as we get into the rest of this Bible study, you're going to learn that feminism, actually, we're going to come up to it right now, feminism, men acting, men, men allowing this stuff to happen, you know, just like a woman being contentious and angry, a man, they lose control of their house. And when they start losing control, they start lashing out. Now this, I pray to God that people listening, don't do this. Of course not. This is horrible. You never hit a woman. But men can verbally abuse women. Men can bash women just by their words. And I can be the first to admit that, you know, I was raised in a household where my dad was very tough. Okay, very tough with his words. And I came from a broken home. And I saw my dad go through, you know, families go through divorces. The divorce rate is very high. And it's because the men are losing control of the home. And when they start losing control, they get angry. It's, it's deep-rooted, not in our evolutionary traits that we've gained over the patriarchal system over hundreds of thousands of millions of years and how monkeys <laughs> this is something that it, it's god has put it in our it's a design and so um i think that we're going to see a huge reverse on this whole feminism thing right has feminism destroyed the family unit? Yes, feminism has decided to destroy the family in the 60s and 70s during the second feminism waves. Feminism destroyed family. They canceled out the, the male rule. The men are the provider and protector of the family, wife, and children. Robin Morgan, a feminist leader, said, We cannot destroy iniquities between men and women until we destroy marriage. Not only are they destroying marriage, but they're making men women and women men trying to do that, confuse people. See, it's all about satanic control. It's all about destroying people so that they can control it. Rich people. 578 plus male victories in female sports over nine months. So not only are the women the feminism destroying the house, but now they're pinning up men against women and destroying their bubbles, their events, what makes women women, even their sports. And it's not going to stop until both men and women stand up and say enough is enough. And a lot, a lot of women, if the women... Start telling the men, I want to stay at home. I want to take care of the children or, you know, uh, I want a, a man to take care of me. And they start going to church. 
and they start taking better care of themselves. Even the men, take better, take care of yourself. You're a vessel of the Lord. If you're in a rut and and you know, no matter what's going on in your life, if okay, I'll take a pot. So there's a there's men in the Bible study that we're at, and they're not taking care of themselves at all. And I have to explain to them that you know, if you want the Lord and you want the desires of your heart to be fulfilled. Not only do you have to pursue God, because the closer you get to God, God gets closer to you, but you got to start taking care of yourself. You got to get motivated and start taking care of yourself. You got to eat better. You got to comb your hair. You've got to shave. You've got to do whatever it is you've got to do. You are a vessel of the Lord, and the Lord wants to be in a clean body. He wants you to take care of yourself. Same thing with the women. If you've got if you're listening to me and you're an atheist or whatever's going on in your life and you want a, a godly man to start leading you, you've got to start acting like a godly woman. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So fake love. The man or the woman, at first, they're going to transform themselves if they don't have the Lord Jesus Christ and you're dabbling and you want to be unequally yoked. I talked to this about the kids. If you want to be unequally yoked, Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. So is your spouse. Um, and then I ask him, I say, has anybody thought something was really good for you, but it turned out to be bad? And they, they all raise their hands. And I, and I let them all talk. And then, and then you help them with discernment. Children are marvelous and they're very, very smart. People have to stop treating them like they're just children. Yeah, of course they're just children. Of course you protect them, right? But as far as their brain learning, they're amazing. And the better, the, the, it's just like Proverbs, train up a child when they're young and when they're older, they're not depart from it. Tra train them up right away. You protect them, of course. You don't let them see any filthy things, of course. Hum adults shouldn't even be doing that, all right? But treat them like, hey, listen, you can know what's going on in the world. This is how the devil tricks people. This is how he treats children. They understand. Okay, and then we go on, the next step, the next part of the Bible study. What is fake happiness? And I ask him, I say, anyone feels sad after they get something that they really wanted, but then it turns out they're not happy with it at all. All right. And I'm not sure exactly where this image came from. If it's a feminist website or whatever, but this is true. Okay. One can always fake a smile, but it's not that easy to fake your feelings forever. Don't fake your feelings with people. Be honest. Be upfront. Don't fake your feelings. The world is teaching the children. It's teaching adults through Netflix and all this junk online how to manipulate people to get what you want, how to be fake, how to have fake happiness so that you can get that woman that, that, woman that you've always dreamed of, how, how to do bodybuilding, how to get your body fit, how to, how to take care of yourself so that you get what you want. It's fake and it doesn't last very long. If you really want true happiness and the true desires that, you know, in your heart that God has placed there, do the right thing. Get close to the Lord first. Find happiness in Him. Be totally joyful and content in Him. If He's not enough for you, nothing else is going to be enough. Jeremiah seventeen nineteen. Thus says the Lord to me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem. Uh, this is the wrong verse, but I talk it, how, how the heart is deceitful and wicked. Who can know it? Okay, because we talk about the heart. So that's sorry about that. It's the wrong verse. Um, but uh, the heart is wicked. Who can know it? Proverbs 21 2. Well, uh, who can know it except for the Lord Jesus Christ? He knows your heart, right? Emotions are always going to be playing with you. You know, uh, I always have to have more, like we were talked about. Okay, but. Jesus knows your actual real heart, real joy, that the 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 space and your the hole in your heart that he can fill. Okay, Proverbs twenty one two. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord knows the heart. 
The Lord evaluates the heart. He understands it better than you'll ever know it. Proverbs 4.23, that's why you do not lean on your own understanding. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of the issues of it are life. And then be careful. Be careful what you let into your heart. Be careful what you let into your mind. Be careful what you let through in your eyes, what you're hearing. Okay, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your whole eye is single and your body, then your body will be full of light. But if your eye is full of darkness, how dark is it? It'll be so dark. All right. So then I want to I want to end on this. I'm trying. I'm going to upload footage because um, here in Eloy, where I'm where I where I'm at, um, they have called Evil Loy, and Eloy is the name of my God, Eloy Eloy. And they have what they call Evil Loy, calling my God evil. And so I did some street preaching against that. All right, and then the public library is putting on Stephen King's It. Okay, the, and, and I went and talked to the the librarian and the community service people that um, put this event on. Explained to him the the Stephen King is his book is horrible. Look up the scene where the kids are in the sewer system and they're doing things that are not good. Just look it up. Okay, it's time to start exposing this evil. Be the light that Jesus Christ wants you to do. Be very smart about it. Be calm. Do not pervert people, of course. But you need to explain to them. And that and that Stephen King based this character off of a real serial killer that killed children and hit him under the basement. And I'm like, is that what you want these kids? Because these kids are going to go read this book. They're going to go look up this book. They're going to do research on it if they think it's cool. Oh man, you should have seen their faces when you when you exposing them. Okay? And I'm not doing this for joy because oh, look at their faces. Oh, I can't wait to see their No, it's because they know deep down if they have a conscience, they know it's evil. Okay, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. John 8.32, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And the truth is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. His name is Jesus Christ, Yahweh, Yeshua. He is, if you were to take this book, Trinity Doctrine, the three-person Trinity Doctrine is meant to confuse you so that People higher than you can say, oh, they don't understand and they're, they, you know, they're not believers in the three-person trinity. No, God is one. And if you were to take this book and you were to make it a human being, that's what God did. That's who Jesus is. Okay? Plain and simple. 